The key mechanisms that nasal high flow provides for non-invasive respiratory support are positive airway pressure and clearance of the anatomical dead space. Dynamic airway pressure increases resistance during expiration, which promotes slower breathing, providing more time for clearing the anatomical dead space. Dead space clearance reduces rebreathing and improves gas exchange. Although larger prongs increase resistance, completely blocking the nares may lead to excess airway pressure, exacerbating breathing problems. We investigated if asymmetrical occlusion of the nares using an asymmetrical cannula interface could improve nasal high-flow respiratory support compared to a symmetrical interface. An asymmetrical interface may increase breathing resistance without fully occluding the nares. An adult upper airway model was used to measure airway pressure and dead space clearance during nasal high flow. Symmetrical and asymmetrical interfaces with similar combined nares occlusion were compared. The model was ventilated by a lung simulator using a range of breathing patterns with physiological concentrations of carbon dioxide entrained in the expired flow. These measurements on the symmetrical interface showed a large decrease in dead space clearance as respiratory rate increased. Clearance decreased because, within each breath, there is less time to purge expired gas from the dead space at higher rates. The asymmetrical interface showed significantly greater clearance, particularly at the highest breathing rates, when there was less time to purge the expired gas. High respiratory rates are common in patients with acute respiratory failure who may benefit from greater airway pressure. The asymmetrical interface showed higher PEEP and greater clearance of the anatomical dead space than the symmetrical interface. Clearance time at the end of expiration appears to have an important role in nasal high-flow respiratory support. This was apparent in COPD breathing patterns with less time to purge expired gas from the dead space compared to normal breathing, even at low respiratory rates. During normal breathing, dead space clearance with either symmetrical or asymmetrical interfaces was higher than when the model was ventilated with COPD breathing patterns. Dead space clearance decreased significantly for both interfaces during COPD breathing. Again, this is because less time was available for clearance. However, nasal high flow through the asymmetrical interface showed greater clearance than the symmetrical one. The difference was most pronounced at the lower flow rates, which are typically used for respiratory support in stable patients. So, despite less time available during COPD breathing, the asymmetrical interface cleared significantly more expired gas from the anatomical dead space, even at low respiratory rates. Mechanisms driving these differences were investigated using an optical profile model of the nasal cavities and high-speed infrared video. Higher concentrations of carbon dioxide appear darker in these videos because expired carbon dioxide absorbs the infrared light illuminating the model from behind. Our model showed the symmetrical and asymmetrical interfaces produce different flow patterns in the upper airway during nasal high flow. The symmetrical interface created circulating flows within each cavity, which dilute and purge expired gas from the dead space. The asymmetrical interface created a pressure gradient and asymmetrical flow between the nasal cavities. This flow through the coana quickly purges expired gas through the less occluded nair. In summary, this work demonstrated that asymmetrical nasal high flow in model systems increased dead space clearance by reverse flow through the coena. Asymmetrical interfaces purged expired gas more quickly than comparable symmetrical interfaces. Larger asymmetrical interfaces may increase PEEP and non-invasive respiratory support with less risk of completely occluding the nares.